The Nigerian Union of Traders in Ghana is appealing to the federal government to intervene in a situation that it threatened their business. On August the 10th, the authorities in Ghana moved around to identify shops owned by Nigerians and requested that such businesses be registered for the purpose of raising tax. The union says more than 160 businesses belonging to Nigerian traders are under lock and authorities are demanding residents permits, uh, standard control, and Ghana Investment Promotion Council registration, which costs as much as $1 million within a 14-day period. All right, Theophilos Akatuba, a business owner in Ghana, is here with us in the studio to talk about this. Theophilos, nice to see you. Good morning. It's and it's good to see you home anyway. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Yeah. So all right. I, I wear different cars. No, exactly. Right. No, it's fine. All right. And we also have journalist and media consultant Ifeka Odia Kimbody here with us in the studio. Ifeka Odia, good morning. Good it's, morning, it's good, good to morning. have you live in the, in studio, the studio this time around, not from, not well, from there. <laughs> really great. Now, uh, Theophilus, let me start with you here. Okay. Now, Nigerians are very troubled with uh, the stories and uh, what we're hearing from, from Ghana. Yes. And we hear that uh, the Nigerian government has been making some moves. But talk to us basically. You have been on ground. What is going on? Okay. Uh, what's going on in Ghana is... Um, it's traders' agitation uh, against what they perceive as domination of their market by foreigners, okay. especially Nigerians. And this reminds us of the South African situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, but in this case, this is, this is um, what you call business, uh, uh, do, a kind of domination. If you go to their market, you find that uh, for every store to store, you see Nigerians are moving in in droves, and you can see visibility that the Ghanaian is losing his space. Number two, Nigerians are dynamic and they don't sell because they want to make huge profit. Mm. The Ghanaian trader is a profiteer. He makes a, he, because of inflationary trend, he, he, he puts a wide margin in his goods. So when Nigerians appear, they sell at, at a relatively better rate. They mm. look at volume, they don't look at, so all of that tend to suffocate the Ghanaian trader. And so he decided to go straight into their laws and look at a clause of that law uh, that he can use to fight back, to protect and save his business. Mm -hmm. And so that's what is happening. They appointing the government to a law in their Ghana Investment Promotions Council, which says that retail trade, retail trade, taxi driving, sa a hairdressing salon, mm -hmm. anything including production of pure water mm -hmm. in sachet, all of that are exclusively reserved for Ghanaian for citizens. Ghanaian. Mm. Okay. That law says if you indeed, as a foreigner, want to come into Ghana to do that trade, you should show proof of bringing in cash of $1 million, or you show goods related to your business. If you want to come in to sell, uh, uh, let's say, uh, hair, women hair, mm. you should come in with $1 million cash, or $1 million worth of human hair imported for you to trade retail. Oh, it is wow. this clause that many of the Nigerian traders have not, been, have not fulfilled. This is what they are pointing their government, please implement this law. And when they bring the law to the police, the police have to implement the law. All yeah. right. If I can, well, the, 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 the ECOWAS protocol allows for free movement and even trade, and which is one a lot of uh, Nigerians say should supersede when we're looking at issues uh, of uh, this matter. I wonder how you see uh, ECOWAS perhaps reacting to this, because this is not the first time we are seeing such agitation. It started, I think, since last year. And then how the government is also reacting to handle this situation now. Well, if you look critically at the ECOWAS Treaty, it does not say that the goods that should be traded should be foreign goods. The, Nigerian, the Ghana Promotion Council is saying that most of the goods are foreign goods. They are not goods produced within the territories of ECOWAS region. And therefore, it cannot pass for what is agreed by the ECOWAS. Most of the things that Nigerian traders sell in Ghana are foreign products, not produced within the ECOWAS territory. And therefore, it is not in tandem with the laws of ECOWAS. And so, they are saying that even if you, are, you do have a million dollars to do business in Ghana, the goods you are supposed to sell as a retailer should be goods produced within the territory of ECOWAS. And so, 
they are saying that you have to live by the laws of ECOWAS and by the laws, you know, relating to business dealings in Ghana. But unfortunately, most of our traders do not understand that there are rules and regulations for trading within or outside of your countries. Mm. What I think should suffice at this moment is that there should be bilateral understanding between Nigerian government and the Ghana government so that there could be some level of, you know, soft landing. The law is law. We can't do anything about it. So, so in this case, in this case, the Ghanaian law should stand. It should stand. You can't okay. do nothing. Okay. Look, if you're talking about ECOWAS, like I said, there are specified laws that says if you are going to trade within the ECOWAS subregion, those goods should be produced locally from those regions. But one wonders why it gets to this level and then a 14-day ultimatum is given. It, is given. It, it looks like an hour no, because, because they, knew, they, said, they knew that there was a trend of businessmen coming in. Mm -hmm. If they're not meeting up, then you should let them know ahead of time. Yeah, Mike, no. Mike, mm. every nation that is sovereign, that is responsible, mm. should look after its citizens. Right. He said the Nigerians are dominating the Ghana market. Yeah. And now, no responsible leadership will open their eyes and allow foreigners displace their own citizens and make them jobless. Mm. Then what's the essence of leadership? <clears throat> All right, but some are saying that perhaps this is a reaction to Nigeria's, the closure of uh, Nigerian borders, because uh, the, the, the timing is being questioned uh, as we speak. A lot of Nigerians are questioning the timing. This is not the first time Nigerians are doing business in Ghana. Nigerians have been in Ghana for a long time. So why now? Yes, it's not about why now. Uh, I think because they want the government to take the same action they've been calling the government to take all the for years. For how long have they been calling for, for this as action? As long as they, I know. I've been in Ghana for 18 years, 19 years. I have had business in Ghana, but I'm not into retail trade. Free movement of goods between in ECOWAS is not retail trading. You can move goods to Ghana, sell them as wholesaler, and leave. Mm -hmm. You can distribute your goods in the market and go away. Don't open a store side by side the Ghanaian. That's what they are telling you. Don't in a market, if you look at the GIPC law, mm. that you cannot open a store in a market. <laughs> so you can go to, out, go to a warehouse, get a big warehouse, bring goods from Nigeria or anywhere, and distribute to Ghanaian traders. You are not banned from that. You are not excluded from that. That does not require $1 million investment. What they are saying is if you want to have a store in a marketplace where people sell spare parts, people sell goods of uh, telephone, mm. uh, little, little things, don't come to that space. They want it for their people because they can't play big. They don't have the resources to compete. They know foreigners can come play big. So you have foreigners. You have Lebanese mm. coming in to do supermarket. That's mm. retail trade, but huge investment. And Nigerians like Nigerians you Nigerians also have... Like you. <laughs> <laughs> you also have Nigerians doing retail in book, uh, like you have uh, Nigerians into the, uh, the, what you call, stationary industry. That's Nigeria. Big. They have invested right. Nobody's so the competitiveness is the major challenge here. Correct. And then finally, just to say this, the government of Nigeria can, can do something because you know, you know why now? Mm. November is election in Ghana. Mm. And the marketers, the traders are predominantly Ashantis. Those are the people, they have a lot of financial power and they have a lot of vote power. They power this president into, into office. Now the president is hands tied because he can't, rea he has to either implement that law or he loses the election. Okay. It has to do with a very serious so, 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 so we're seeing a connection there. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, th this discussion is going to continue because this concerns a lot of Nigerians. Yes. Absolutely. But let's leave it here now due to time. Uh, Theophilo Sakatuba, thank you so thank much you so for your time. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, Ifekaude Akimode, thank you so much for coming. Good to see you. Good to see you in live in the studio. <laughs> <Same here. laughs>